Welcome to the Captains at Center Ice podcast. As always, click that like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below on your opinions as well as what you thought about today's topics. Without further ado, let's bring the Captains to Center Ice. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Captains at Center Ice podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Kessner, and today, as you can tell, I have my good friend Ryan Coast back for another episode. It's been uh, a week without him, and it's uh, it's been uh, interesting to say the least. Let's, <laughs> I'll say that. So, Ryan, go ahead and uh, say hello to the viewers for us. Hi, uh, viewers. Um, I just wanted to to thank you for listening and thank you for watching our video. Um, and cheers to the Heritage Classic. I didn't get to watch it, but I heard it was a great atmosphere and saw many videos of it, and it looked awesome. Yeah. Um, it, it. I didn't even know it was going on, to be quite honest, which is kind of a, a sad thing to say because the NHL just did a terrible job at announcing – and marketing that so um i'm i'm kind of disappointed in that honestly because i didn't know it was happening until the week of um and i'll you know with it being so late because it's western canada i couldn't watch it anyway but um i was kind of disappointed in that but it turned out to be a good game supposedly so that's that's good did you watch any of it, Ryan? No, I did not get a chance to watch it because, like you said, the marketing job of the Heritage Classic was not that great, and to to put it nicely, and that's that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. It, because it, outdoor games are fun, and there's something to be heralded about because that's like pond hockey. Well, and, and I honestly the best thought way to was, play hockey. Oh yeah, I and I thought it was honestly a and out like in january you know what i mean like i thought yeah. it was gonna be a january game and, and it wasn't so i don't know it was uh it was interesting i apologize to the viewers by the way i am drinking water because my throat gets dry during these so if you see me pull up my cup that's exactly what i'm doing so um but yeah so let's let's jump right into it i don't want to i don't want to keep the viewers listening to us talk about the heritage classic classic which we did not watch <laughs> um so let us know if you enjoyed it though um that being said let's jump right in okay so let's talk about forwards um so i really wanted to talk about this because it's something that that someone brought up in a in another podcast that i listen to quite often and it was a it was an interesting interesting talk. They they were talking about a specific player and would you put that player in this top five list? And it made me think of who just in general, who is my top five. So right now, currently in the NHL, I wanna know Ryan, who your top five list of forwards, and I'll give my list here in a minute, but who is your currently as you're as you're watching the NHL? Who is your top five forwards currently playing right now? When we pre potted and I saw your list, I I kind of mimicked it a little bit, and I'll I'll let you know with mine that it was Pasternak, Leon title Jack Eichel, Marshan, and Connor McDavid. I put Jack Eichel there because he's doing so much more than any other forward has to do with a subpar team and to be in the position of first place of the Atlantic is remarkable. I think in my opinion, and Marchand just knows where to be on the ice. No questions asked. Connor McDavid's Connor McDavid. We all know about his greatness. Um, Leon Dreisel has picked up his game from the year before and Pasternak, same thing with Marchand just has that offensive giftness of knowing where to be on the ice in the offensive zone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I would, I would agree with that list. Um, my, mine is a little different, but I, I, you can make an argument for all of those players. Um, so let's, let's, um, I'll give, I'll give my list here in a second, but what I want to do just to make it a little bit easier for the listeners and the viewers. So let's, let's go top down. So just, 
in your in your order who's who's Ooh, your, top who's, down yeah yeah okay. so who's just we'll talk about one player at a time so your first player was who Pasternak. That was in no. If we're gonna rank them, no, not probably not ranked. Just in your list. Who's oh, your oh, list. Pasternak, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, my uh, the top of my list was also Pasternak, um, and not not that he's the top n- number one player of of the forward at this time. Um, it's just just when we started formulating this list. Um, so mine is also Pasternak. Twenty three goals, eleven or th- twenty three points, eleven goals. Um, his play has been outstanding, obviously on the top. Currently, a lot of people making the argument top line in the NHL, uh, especially with the Boston Bruins. Very talented line. I think we can all make that argument for sure with him, Marchand, and uh, Patrice Bergeron. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the thing that really stuck out to me with this player was his shooting ability and his playmaking ability. I think previously in the NHL, I think Pasternak has really been like, oh, he's a he's a goal scorer. But I think at the beginning of the le- or the beginning of the season, he's really made some outstanding plays to dish the puck if you will to mm-hmm. some of the other players on, on the Boston Bruins. So, I think that's one of the things that put him in this top 5 list for me. Uh, would would you agree with that, Ryan? I would. Um, when I saw him play against the Avs, he was really he really worked worked hard to get the puck and just trying to be a complete forward. So that's something I can really appreciate. Yeah, I I would agree. Okay, Ryan, who is your number two? The or the next one down, I guess. Leon Dreisaitl. I thought. I think he's. I mean, I have him on fantasy, and he's just been immenseful in that. So, kudos to him, and I, I really like him as a player. He he really feeds off Connor McDavid, and he was also on my list too. When when you have two of the top five forwards, I'm begging you, Edmonton, do not screw this up for them. Yeah. Do not. Yeah. Do not screw this up. Yeah, I would. I would agree. I also had Leon Dreisaitl on my list. Um, 21 points and 10 goals currently, uh, 50 goal scorer last season. Um, I know a lot of players or not players, a lot of pontificators, if you will, wondered if he was only getting those goals, those goal numbers because of Connor McDavid. Um, I, I don't think so. I think he's just that good of a player. I think he could have 50 goal seasons. Uh, I don't think he would do it as consistently without Connor McDavid, but I think he would be good enough to be a threat for 50 goal seasons consistently. Mm -hmm. Um, I overall, I mean, he's been, he's been an absolute threat on the ice. He's got some speed to him, which I think I saw a lot of that this season. I, so far, I, I didn't know he was that fast. I knew he was big and I knew he could play kind of like a more gritty style of hockey, but he's, he's played some with some speed lately. And I, I think the consistency along with the fact that he's a little bit faster and he's using his size properly. I, 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 there's, it's a tough argument to not have him on this list. I think you have to have him on this list. I would agree. Um, so the next person after that was Jack Eichel. Okay. Now I, I put him on the list because he's doing so much for his team as, as being that number one guy than any of the others. Like if Jack Eichel isn't there, Buffalo is not in the number one spot that they're in. Okay. And I- you could take Marshan or Posternik off their line. Yeah. And I still think they're in a good position. I don't think you can take Jack Eichel off and see the Buffalo Sabres do as well as they are. I I would agree. Um, and that's why I have him there. I, I would agree. I don't necessarily, I don't have him in my top five, but that's a fair, I think that's a fair pick to put in the top five. Um, one of the players, I'll, I'll counter that argument a little bit. I put someone you I don't think you have in that list and um 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I have Mark Stone in my no, list. No, I don't have Mark Stone on um, the list. I think I think Mark Stone is a player. He's 16 points, seven goals, but I think he has basically led and carried this Vegas team offensively specifically to be a little bit more dominant and consistent than what they were. Um, I, I think without Mark stone, I think they would still be an offensive threat, but I think they would not be as consistent as they are. Um, I think he's an underrated player in the league. Um, and many would probably consider Jack Eichel in that list a little bit too. But I think, I think Mark stones is an underrated player in the league right now. And even uh, Patrick Kane came out um, about a week ago and said that he was he was a player that he has some underrated skills in that he uses that a lot of people don't pay attention to. So um, big guy, he can shoot the puck, he can score goals, but I think he he plays a full complete game of hockey, and that, I felt like I had to put him on this list because of that. Okay, and uh, then my next player, I guess. Before I go there, um, I wanted to, I I might counter your counterpoint with, would Vegas Knight be where they are? Do you think Vegas Knights? Do you think the Vegas Knights would be as high as they are right now without Mark Stone, or do you think he's that vital? Um, I think they would dip in the rankings. I okay, but I mean, if you want to make the art, I mean, Jack Eichel. I, I mean, if you remove Jack Eichel from the Buffalo Sabers, I think for sure they would dip further than the than the Vegas Golden Knights. Mm-hmm. But I think they're I think they're both important to their teams. The only difference is, is Vegas is a deeper team. Yes, that that's that's where I would agree with you as well. I but... yeah, that's that's basically where I would put that. I, Vegas has the better goalie; they have better defense. Mm-hmm. Um, they do have some offensive prowess, if you will, in the Pacific Division. I, I don't know. I, I do think they would dip, though. I don't, I don't yeah. think it's a, I don't think it would be as far as Buffalo, though, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Um. So my next player was Brad Marchand. This guy, he just know, knows where to be on the ice. He's, he's offensively talented with his hands. Knows, knows where to be in the right place at the right time and just scores goals. He's a goal merchant. Like that's what he is. That's his job. He's a goal poacher and he knows where to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I also have Brad Marchand on this list. Um, I think he's got 20 points, seven goals right now. I think, I, I mean, I, I almost would have, I almost was going to say that he, like if you would have talked to me last week, I would have probably thought, well, he's the reason Pasternak is scoring so much. But then, mm. if you look at some of the goals that Pasternak has, it's not because of Brad Marchand. Like last season, I would have, I would have definitely said that Brad Marchand yeah. is really good at dishing the puck to David Pasternak. But this mm-hmm. season, I, I, it's almost like they're all like you know, by themselves, they're like to get, they work together really well, but they also all have the offensive threat and can be offensively minded by themselves too. So I would agree. I think, I think he's on this list for a good reason. He goes in to the dirty areas to get the puck. He is strong on the puck. Um, I mean, I think the biggest times that I've seen him, I don't know. I I watched him play against the Rangers in this past uh, on Sunday, and he just he just dominated. Like he went into the dirty areas, got the puck out of the net or out of the corners, and passed the puck around. Um, I had two goals in that game. I, he was just a he was a threat all over the ice. Mm-hmm. Um, not- go ahead. I I would agree with what you said and everything, and I I completely agree with you there um i think what a little is under is and i don't think it's been mentioned that it is that he does so much for the bruins with 
when he's when he's handicapped by his size, he's not that big of a player. No, he's only five nine. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a little underestimated and that just doesn't go as noticed as much. Yeah. And for the heavy the heavy hitting style of hockey that the Bruins play, I think that's a, a very valid point to bring up. Um, all right, so who is your net? Who is your? I guess this is your final player, the the final player in your list. I mean, I don't think any list is complete without Connor McDavid, and fair. just because of what he does, he's so fast. Like, it's not fair how fast he can skate. Yeah, and he just does it so well, and the way he, it's not only how fast he skates. You can you can fast play fast all day long but if you can't play if your hands can't match your speed that you're going at you're basically useless yeah i would agree and and he does that so well like his hands match his speed so well yeah so the so the miles that he can go per hour is just unbelievable well and i i mean he's he's consistently a, a player that teams have to figure out how to stop. I, I think that's a fair, I think that's a fair player to put on that list. Um, he's so fast. He can score goals. I think the biggest thing is he's a, he's a really good playmaker is really what he is. I, I you know, I think he's, he's definitely a player that is always in, in contention for most points every season. I, he's definitely one of those players. Um, I don't have him on my list. And the reason was is because there's another player that I think I naturally want to put on this list. And that's Alex Ovechkin. Um, 14 goal or 14 points, nine goals. And I think the only reason I, well, not the only reason. I think the biggest reason I put him on this list is the age he's at, the amount of goals he's still scoring, and the fact that he's just absolutely still ripping one-timers at the age he's at, basically. Um, I I mean, Connor McDavid's a more complete player, if you will, when it comes to offense and defense. But I think Connor, I think Alex Ovechkin, right now, out of if I were to, you could put either player. I think both players are valid points, but I think you could put both players on any team, and you would definitely be like, "This is a superstar. He's definitely a top five player." You know what I mean? So I, in my opinion, I I would I put. Alex Ovechkin slightly over Connor McDavid. Um, I value goal scoring a little bit more, I think, than most people. So that's probably why I put him up there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Would you would you put Alex Ovechkin just below that in that fifth spot, maybe, or in the top ten? Would you put? Alex I'd put him in the at pushing for top five. But I'd have him barely, just barely out because I think that's fair. Um, like a third of his goals, like he's a power play goal merchant. Like that's, I agree. That's that's how I see him, and I think I don't think he's gonna ever lose that label just because of how good his slap shot is when he's open on that power play. Yeah, and so for me, it's just like he's he kind of he kind of makes his bread and butter off the power play. And I don't think that's fair to judge a player. I rather judge him in open play. Yeah, and that's where I'd put my sock in. I I think that's fair. Um, I I definitely think that's fair. Um, I to each their own. Um, I I in my opinion, Connor McDavid is in that sixth spot. Yeah. Um, I mean. Maybe you could make an argument you put him instead of Leon Dreisaitl because I do have Leon Dreisaitl over over Connor McDavid. Um, but that being said, I think you could easily make an argument one way or the other. The other thing is, I think it's important to note I don't n- none of us have like Austin Matthews on this list or anything like that. 
Like this is a very like interesting list. I last season it would have been a di- a different list. I think. Than I think currently. Jack Eichel is the only American that we have on the list. If I'm I not mistaken, I think that I think that's correct. That's the only player. I, I and I that's just me. I don't think you have an American on the team. I don't on the top five forwards. Nope. I only have one Canadian, and then nope. I take that back. Mark Stone's a Canadian, so two Canadians and the rest are, and the other three are European. So you're not you're not wrong. I so I, that's kind of scary to think about when when we have the Olympics coming up in two years. And we don't have an American in the top five. Well, and it makes you, I mean, it makes you think that the, I mean, Patrick Kane, Austin Matthews, Jack Eichel, I think you could put in that list. Do you think Patrick Kane in two years makes the team? Um, I don't, I don't know. So. I don't know. I, th- I mean, he, he does, he does really well in worlds. But, he does, but like but he's also playing against at that age. Do you think? Do you think he'll still have it? I don't know. I Patrick Kane kind of goes. I don't know. I I. It's hard for me to judge Patrick Kane because I he's he's so deceptive in how he plays that I don't know how to judge him if he's playing well or poorly. Um, I could judge Jonathan Taves a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, with Pat Patrick Kane, I don't know. I, Austin Matthews, I think, is a fair, easy one, to, easier one to judge than Patrick Kane. I'm just like this was a tangent question. Like this wasn't yeah, on this, our podcast, this isn't on our list. But, but but it's just a scary thing to think about that our I don't know how our American team would look like if we were to play the Olympics right now. Yeah, well, yes. and I don't know if we're gonna play in the Olympics anyway because I don't know if Gary Bettman's gonna let players go over. Because he didn't, yeah. he he didn't let it d- happen the last time, so I don't know. I I could easily see them saying no again, but we do have the uh, the World Cup coming up again at some point, so that'll be. I'm sure he'll play on that that team, whatever yeah. USA team that is. Um. Okay, so let's let's move on here. We've been talking about that for about 22 minutes here, and I don't don't want to stay on it too long. So let's let's talk about um, another question that I think that Ryan you came up with is, and I think it's a, a valid question. Which player in each division has surprised you most? Whether it's a good surprise or a bad surprise. So uh, Ryan, I'll let you start. You have an interesting player out of the Central Division. Yeah, I picked Joe Pavelski. Um, coming into it from from the Dallas Stars, he he was allotted as like a special talent, could get you goals, and that would solve the Dallas's problems of sco- goal scoring that they had last year because they were a defensive minded team last year, and that made sense from the co- from the coach that they picked from DU being he was defensive minded there, so obviously he's going to bring that mindset to what he to what he knows with the Dallas stars. So with Joe Pavelski coming in, he got a lot of goals for San Jose last year and was pivotal in getting them to the Western conference finals against the Colorado avalanche. And Joe was given the fact that he was supposed to be there as a goal scorer and just hasn't been there um, for them. And, it the standings have shown that the Dallas Stars aren't a good team, and maybe it takes a little time to mesh. I'm not sure, but but they had a full training camp. I don't, so I'm not sure why it's gone so wrong for them. Yeah, um, it, Dallas is an interesting, a d- interesting team right now, um, and I, I think this is a, f- a fair pick to have because Joe put, put it. Oh, sorry. Go Sorry ahead. to interrupt, but just to put it in perspective, he has three points. Yeah. Three points out of 13 games. Yeah. And he's play- I think he's playing on the second line. Yeah. Well, and not only that, they had him at – they had him working with the, um, the first line for a while. And then 
they I think they dropped him down because it just wasn't working out. And then, yeah, I don't know. It's just he, they it's have him over. right now. They have him on the. They don't even. They have him on the second line. Yeah, and and I could see that, which is surprising. Oh, that's why. Okay, Rajalov's not a right winger. I thought he was. Okay, he's not a right winger. No, I didn't know that. I thought he was too. <laughs> Rajalov is a left winger, and ha- they have him playing on the second line with Rupert Hintz and Joe Pavelski. Oh, all right, interesting. Because I thought it was, I thought the top line was Jamie Ben, Tyler Seguin, and Alex Radulov. It it was for a while. It, at least it was last season. So oh. they they changed that. That that must be a change. Um. So Joe Pavelski, I think that's a fair pick. Um. And I I would I I would agree. I think that that has been a surprise. And Dallas as a whole has been ab absolutely abysmal of a team i mean they were your top pick for the west yeah i i thought they could go all the way to the final i honestly they were in that list but to be fair i think a lot of people also picked tampa bay and toronto to go to that list and they're not doing so hot either so i don't know this season's been interesting to say the least but dallas has been absolutely terrible um so for me my pick out of the central division is Patrick Kane and it's a bad surprise because I think he has played absolutely I'll say he's played mediocre like he's played okay like he's made I mean, some let's 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 be unfiltered here what what do you really is he has he been garbage no I I think there are times that he's played like like well enough like he's made play he's made plays that are Patrick Kane like but the problem is is that he's not scoring the puck and the problem is he's on a team that is absolutely not of uh, scoring the puck outside of him either so this season he's basically I don't know I I won't say he's terrible because I've I've watched highlights of him and he'll do some like really good backhand pass across the ice that creates a one-timer but they're just not converting on it right but i Mm -hmm. he when he shoots the puck like i watched a highlight of um who did who did they play they played someone um oh it was edmonton they played edmonton and i was watching that game and he went like he got he got an opportunity to shoot the puck and mike smith like was laying down on the on the ice and he just didn't lift the puck like he he should have like and he needed to shoot it top shelf in order to score that goal and it's just like his his scoring touch is gone right now so i he's playing like mediocre at best so he's not i won't say he's awful but i bad for patrick kane but mediocre in terms of like rest of the players in the league, you know, I, I feel like I would put, you could put Patrick Kane on like, if you put Patrick Kane on Colorado, I think he would do much better. You know what I mean? That team would, the Colorado is already scary. If you put Patrick Kane there game over, I think. Right. Like, so my point is, is that like, I still think he would, he would play better. Like part of it's the team he's on, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily he's bad, but he it has been a surprise to say the least that he's not doing as well as I thought he would after yeah, coming I, off a record season last year. Go to ahead. be honest with you, like the overall surprise to me, and this is just looking at the two weeks of the season that we've seen, or the three weeks that we've seen, has been. I really thought the central division would have the two wild cards. That's not the case. It's the Pacific that's carrying the wild cards right now. Yeah. It's Anaheim and Calgary. And that, that was, I, I really thought the central was stronger than it was. And it's proven not to be the case. Well, and the Pacific has been the most consistent, like, like Anaheim, Anaheim recently came off. Of, what was it? A six, two win against Colorado somehow. And then 
I mean, they they lost the next game. They, I forget who they played. But and then like Vegas has been relatively consistent. Edmonton's been relatively consistent and Calgary's been relatively consistent. You know, they're not it's not like they're just giving up games. Whereas the central and division And Vancouver's only one point out of that discussion too. Yeah. They're thir- they're at 13 points and Calgary's at 14 and I'm's at 14. So, it's not like Vancouver's out of the question either. Well, and let's be honest here, somehow San Jose's in that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't think that well san jose is not not really in the list because i they're four points back from vancouver that's true there but i mean i mean what the point is is that when you're talking about like so san jose's fifth overall when in terms of the teams vying for a mm-hmm. wild card spot right mm-hmm. dallas is below san jose and so is chicago so is yeah. minnesota yeah, uh, L A really, L A doesn't count because L A is just absolutely terrible. Yeah, so we, we really thought, I and I thought you did too that the the Central was probably going to be the strongest division coming into the season. I did. I, I I agree with you. That's that's what I thought coming in. Um. So yeah, I I don't know. Speaking of the Pacific, who was your surprise out of the Pacific? I thought it for. Now, I'm going negative here again, and I thought it was goalie play from San Jose. Martin Jones has been awful, to say the least. Arendelle, awful. And I think Arendelle needs to take over the net as soon as possible, even though I say he's awful. But Martin Jones just isn't getting the job done with a below 90% save percentage. Arendelle just hasn't been given the opportunity, and I think he could really take over that net and get it at – to say the le- to say at best probably a stable position where they can be a little confident in what they have at in between the pipes. Yeah, I I I could see that argument. I, Martin Jones has been absolutely terrible. He was the worst goalie last season out of all the goalies in my opinion, out of all the starting goaltenders at least. Um I he's been absolutely terrible and I, let, I'll give him some credit here. His team in front of him has not been great either. But, but. Which is kind of shocking because because of the defense that they have in front of them isn't, isn't bad no. by any means. Brett Burns, um, what's his name? Brett Burns and. Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson aren't terrible terrible at defense no they're, they're not they're great offensively like i'm gonna give them credit there but like they have it balanced in a good way yeah i and, would agree and that's what's shocking about it i just don't understand what is the issue there yeah i i don't know well i could pontificate on that at some other point but yes i would agree martin jones i would agree martin jones is a awful 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 goalie right now and i could see that being a surprise um for me it is actually a good pick for the pacific james neal um and i think the reason i picked james neal was because overall he just straight up started scoring goals again you know he was the the james neal we remember the james neal we saw in vegas if you will mm-hmm. um and i think that he created a um a good start for the edmonton oilers and has been relatively decent ever since so i i think james neal's back which is good and yeah i'm i'm excited um, i have to say like if we were to do awards right now he win comeback player of the year I I I could see that argument. I could see that argument. Uh moving on, let's talk about um an interesting another interesting division, the Atlantic Division. Um you have an interesting player that we've already mentioned, but I think deserve also deserves to be in this list. Who is that player? I I have to like I've made the argument for him in my top five. It's Jack Eichel. I think he's 
like I said before, like he's doing so much with so little around him. And player like Rasmus Ristalin wants to leave, yet they're in first place. I don't know if that's still the case, but he wanted to leave um, in the beginning and just didn't think it was worth it. But look at what they're doing. They You have to be impressed with that. Oh, and I mean, he's been outstanding. Now, the question is, will he be able to sustain this play for 82 mm-hmm. games? Um, and I... That'll be interesting to pay attention to. But for a start of the season, definitely worth paying attention to. I think it's a good a good play by Buffalo um, with him there. Um, and I, I agree. I think it's a good – it's been a good surprise to see Jack Eichel back up in it because last season, at least in the back half of the season, he was not playing very well. The whole team wasn't playing well. But – He's playing. He's playing well now. So I th- that's a fair. I think that's a fair pick. Um, mine is a negative, and it's Matthews, Austin Matthews. I think Austin Matthews has played absolutely. I won't say terribly, but worse than worse than Patrick Kane. Uh, so I guess he's he's played bad. I'll say he's played bad. Um, the amount of points that he has does not reflect his play I don't think he's in the he's in the top 10 for goals but I think that overall he has not been the effective player on the ice that we saw from him last season um uh, I, go, go ahead. ahead oh I was oh, just gonna I was, s- go ahead sorry I was just gonna say like in his the off the ice incident that he had doesn't do him any favors. No, and that's not why I put. And him I know in that you, list, but but I think it's fair to mention. You are correct. I don't. I don't think it helps in this situation. Um, the other thing is, is he's he's a big player, and for some reason he doesn't play with that size. I'm not sure what it is, and part of it might be because he's had he's been injury prone for the last ever since he's joined the NHL. You know, he's, he's now, I don't think he's played a full 82 games and healthy. And so maybe he wants that, you know what I mean? But that being said, it, I mean, he needs to play a more complete game and he has not lived up to his, I mean, let's be honest, his salary's worth X amount of dollars, right? Like a ridiculous amount of dollars. And, eleven and a half mil. Yeah, at a, at eleven and a half million dollars, and David Pasternak's like at half of that, and he's scoring more goals than Austin Matthews, and he's playing a more complete game than Austin Matthews. So, out of the Atlantic Division, I think I I have to go with Austin Matthews. He's not the offensive or overall on the ice threat that we expected out of him this season. I would agree. Um, what I've noticed is like he play like he plays out he doesn't like he has the size of Miko Rantanen and he just doesn't use the body that and, and Rantanen is like that's one of the good things about Rantanen is Rantanen's yeah. physical. Oh he yeah, he definitely knows how to use his body and shield the puck for sure and hold on to it. And that's why I love him so much on the Avs team, but um and the reason I bring up the abs is just because I watch them so often and I know how to analyze them. But um, but that's what I that's what I've noticed when I watch Austin Matthews. I don't see him use the body how he should be using it. Yeah, I would agree. I 100 percent agree. Yes, he can shoot the the puck, but you in the NHL you have to be able to do more than that. Yeah. Um. All right, let's move on. Metropolitan. <laughs> This was actually a tough one for both of us. Uh, who was your pick? Your pick was a little bit interesting. Who was your I've, pick? I thought Thomas Reese was a good highlight to put. Um, Tom, is it Reese or Grease? Grease. Grease. Or I apologize. Grace. Um, I put him in the list because I and I think this goes. I think this is a more credit to the Islanders coaching. Because they've produced good goalies for the past two years now. Yeah. 
And so I think it's more credit to them just knowing how to position their goalies and make them put them in a position of success. Yeah. I the other thing that I think is interesting with Grice is <clears throat> he is not I mean I everyone expected Varlamov to be in that number 1 spot. Mhm. And Grice has done better. And I mean to be fair as a coach you put the better goalie into the on on the ice, right? Or the, in logic the more important would, games. Logic would dictate that, right? Yeah. Um but Thomas Grice has surprised us because I think we all expected Varlamov to be that number one goaltender. Mm-hmm. So or at least get get the opportunity. But I don't think he, re- he even really got the opportunity. They they chose Grice out of the s- training camp and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I I'm I'm cur- I mean, obviously the they have a reason for it, but mm-hmm. um, it's just it's interesting. But yeah, definitely a surprise with Grice with how well Grice is playing. Um, for me, it's a little, it's a different player, different type of player, Sidney Crosby. Now, I know a lot of people probably expect are talking about, well, Sidney Crosby is a superstar. He's not really a surprise. Well, this season he has been because I think he has played really well for the team that he has with him. And not only that, he's led the team that has had some serious injuries, including Evgeny Malkin, to win some games that I don't think a lot of us expected for them to win. And I think that also for them to be as dominant as they are, which is interesting to say the least, and many people have written them off as up there this is the end of the Pittsburgh era, if you will. Um, So I I think it's interesting with how well he's played and how well he's led this team. So I, for the Metropolitan, I, I picked Sidney Crosby. I think he, he fits that role. He surprised me. Um, Anything to say about that? Or do you want to move Um, on to the last question? I would, I, I would agree um, my only counter would be they're not doing great in the Atlant or Metropolitan. They're fourth place, but again, the injuries you could counter that with the injuries that they've had. That's probably they're reaching their maximum potential at the moment right now. Well, and let's let's be honest here. I'm not saying he's playing outstanding. I'm just saying yeah. he's playing out outstanding for what I expected out of them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. He's not like Thomas Grice, where it's like, oh my God, Thomas Grice is doing so well. Yeah. Um, it's just like, you know, for for what I expected out of them, they're exceeding my expectations. So that's why mm-hmm. it's a surprise for me. Um. All right, let's move on to the last question here. We're at about. I really 40. like this question. Yeah. This and this podcast is going to go a little bit longer, and I, that's a, I'm I apologize to the viewers, but I think this question will make up for that because this question is a good one. So which coach in the NHL currently is in the hot seat for you specifically? So you had an, uh, a coach that I think a lot of people would agree with. Who is that coach? Um, Bruce Boudreaux from the Minnesota wild. He, he, I, I don't, I don't know what management and the fans of the Minnesota wild really expected when they had this kind of roster built for him, like the roster's old and aging. They're not, they're not adapting to the new NHL where it's fast and, and stick handling is what's needed. That's it's just not there. Yeah. And for the life of me, I don't understand why Zuccarello picked the Minnesota wild to, to be there. If it was money, Good for you for securing the bag. I applaud you on that. But, like, if you're going there to win a cup, you pick the wrong destination because they're nowhere near a cup. I'm not sure why he didn't stay in Dallas. That That's that's a fair point. Like, I don't – I just don't get it. Like, and maybe that's why Dallas is struggling. Maybe they are missing that one, one piece. And I wouldn't 
Zuccarello has to be on trade bait. He has to be. Well, he, I mean, he signed a three-year deal with Minnesota, if I remember correctly. Well, if Minnesota Wild wanted to rebuild, which they should, it would make the most sense to trade your best piece, who is Zuccarello. Yeah. Well, and let's let's also remember, I, I mean, Bruce Boudreau has been not helpful on Washington when he coached Washington. He was not helpful in Anaheim. I mean, all right, let's be let's give him some credit. He he coached them all the way to the Western Conference Final, but I'm pretty sure that anyone could have coached that team to the Western Conference Final with how stacked Anaheim was at that time. Mm-hmm. Um. And now that he's on in Minnesota, I I'm, I mean, I'm actually surprised a little bit that he's not coached them a little bit better. But that being yeah. said, he is a player's coach. I normally he's decent. Is he? The, is he though? Because Jason Zucker threw him under the bus. Well, nor, normally he is, unless he changed his unless he changed his type of coaching in Minnesota. He he was in Anaheim. I know that for a fact. He just mm-hmm. kind of like let the players. He's basically like go out there and score goals and be creative and whatnot. And mm-hmm. I, I'm unless he changed. I mean, let's be honest here. Anaheim's goal scoring capabilities when he coached Anaheim versus Minnesota's goal scoring capabilities right now is absolutely like way different. Like, it's night and day. It, uh, and Anaheim's and day. not even really a top goal scoring team. Like yeah. let's let's be honest here, right? So uh I I don't know. I, I think their issue I, their issues are far beyond coaching, but yes, I would agree. Bruce Bruce Boudreaux is um definitely in the hot seat this season. And who is your coach on the hot seat? So mine mine's a little bit I mean, probably a little bit more controversial um, because I think less people would agree with me on this, but I think it's Mike Babcock. Um, And my reasoning for this is you have to think about it like this. If the Toronto Maple Leafs don't make it out of the first round or even into the playoffs, if they don't make it out of the first round. You don't think they make it the playoffs? Well, I'm, I think they they can make it to the playoffs. Once John Tavares comes back, I think they can they'll make it into the playoffs. But I'm just saying with how weird the season is, if they don't make it to the playoffs, if mm-hmm. just if if they don't make it to the playoffs, if they just miss the playoffs, I think he is in the hot seat. Uh because he hasn't coached them past the first round. Granted, there's part part of it is not I don't think I think part of it's not Mike Babcock's fault. But I think there's an expectation that because he's won one with Detroit, he's won a Stanley Cup with Detroit. Therefore, he can coach people, he can coach the Toronto Maple Leafs to a Stanley Cup final. And I think that's a fair expectation. However, there's a couple of things to take into account. One, Detroit had two Selkie players on their team, and they had all-star defensemen all up their lineup. And Don't forget had, Howard. And Howard, yeah. And those all those players were all-stars, and they were living up to their potential. Number two is the fact that currently the Toronto Maple Leafs have – what fifty is like fifty percent of their salary cap tied up in almost four players. fifty, almost fifty, yep, yeah, almost fifty percent of their salary caps tied up in four players. So the the ability to bring players in creates a little bit of an issue. So what what ends up happening is at some point the question is are you are you what you are already? Like will coaching really change what your team makeup is? I, yeah, and I think I think it falls on general management at this point. Like true. Um when you develop such an offensive minded team, how do you expect them to be sufficient in defensive situations? Yeah. And and when their goalie is shaky at best, 
yeah. with Anderson, like he's very streaky. Yeah. He will go on his hot streaks and then he'll get real cold yeah. real quick. So when you have an inconsistency at the goaltender position and then you have then you don't have solid defensemen and I say I emphasize defensemen because they have offensive defensemen. They don't have true defense. I would agree. And that's that's where that's where Mike it's kind of been overshadowed in my opinion that Mike Babcock may be a little overrated because of look at the team that he had at the Red Wings. Well, and let's not let's also not ignore the fact that he coached the My- Anaheim Mighty Ducks at the time with Paul Correa in 2003 to a Stanley Cup final and lost to a very stacked New Jersey Devils team. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a great coach. He plays his coaching style is very is more old school than most coaches nowadays. So, that's also another thing. If you think about it, the current setup of the NHL is hey, let's um, you know, let's have some speed. Let's have some skill. Mm. And he's very much a let's get the puck into the corner, grind for the puck. Someone's a grinder and someone dishes the puck out to the front of the net to some, for someone to score, right? That's yeah. how he coaches his team. And that style of hockey is not as Prevalent. consistent anymore. That It doesn't yeah. work because uh, – and the NHL has changed. It's speed and skill. So um, I, I don't know. I think – He's on the hot seat, and part of the reason, let's be honest here, I think part of the reason is because he's in Toronto. Oh, yeah. 100% I agree on that. Anytime you're a coach in Toronto and it's the hockey team, you're going to be on the hot seat. I, You could go 82-0, have a perfect season. You're still like, oh, yeah, but we might need to look at our future and say we might need to fire this guy. It's just that's the way it is. Yeah, It's unfair. But that's how it is in 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 Canada in general. That's how it is. Yeah, but I current I currently do have him on the hot seat. I also have Bruce Boudreau on the hot seat. But you already took Bruce Boudreau, so for me, it's Mike Babcock. So, um, well, that's we're at about fifty two minutes here, so I don't want to take too much more time. I think. That was an interesting question. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was a little bit longer of a podcast than what we're trying to do, but I felt like that question deserved us talking about it because I, I, I think it's a good question for us to discuss and for the three weeks that we're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's I think it's a fair question. Um, tune in next week because there will be some interesting questions. I think we'll start. Once we get into it, because it'll be about week four, <clears throat> we'll start talking about uh, about well, let's some... do power rankings. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna break down some teams. Is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. do that next next week. So tune in for that. And um, yeah, I thank you for coming on, Ryan. Um, thank you for having me so i i know this podcast came out a little comes out a little later than normal we planned for the weekend but both of our lives got a little hectic so that's why it came out a little later um that being said like comment and subscribe comment down below what you thought of these questions did you agree or disagree and yeah that being said um this was the captain set center ice and we'll see you next week bye Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. As always, like I said before, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below on what you thought about today's topics. Thank you for joining the Captains at Center Ice and we'll see you in the next episode.